Hi, I'm Ben Sass, and I'd like to tell you a little bit about why I'm excited about America's presidential inauguration. And not just this one, but America's whole inaugural tradition. For over 200 years, this nation has been peacefully transferring power from one president to the next. We don't reflect enough on how odd that is historically. And if it doesn't give you goosebumps, you need to pause and we need to relearn some history together because this isn't the way it used to be done. Let's start with Thomas Jefferson and how he became our third president because it shocked the world. The background of the story actually begins a little earlier with a different stunner for the world. George Washington, the victorious general in America's Revolutionary War, declined to become America's king. So we started with a President Washington and not our own version of King George. Then Washington surprised people again when he chose to serve only two terms, voluntarily laying down his power. But he was then followed by his own vice president and political heir apparent, John Adams. So their Federalist Party had really always run the show here. But then came the campaign and election of 1800, and it was nasty. It wasn't just the dirtiest campaign America had ever seen until that point, though it was that. The Jefferson Adams campaign of 1800 was arguably the nastiest U.S. campaign ever, before or since. It's difficult to overstate just how messy this campaign was. The whole country was picking sides. Tragically, some supporters of Adams and some supporters of Jefferson announced that supporters of the opposite side were probably going to hell. Jefferson and Adams had dramatically different views on policy, foreign policy, the relationship of the federal government to the states, and the direction of this young country. Both camps were at each other's throats, launching one vicious personal attack after another. In the end, Thomas Jefferson defeated the sitting president. And then it's hard to overstate the uncertainty about what would happen next. The whole world watched and waited and wondered. Was our country, was our constitution, strong enough to peacefully transition power from one party to an opposing party? Would John Adams really step aside? He controlled the army. Could he hand the executive branch over to a party that had called him a weakling and a British sympathizer? Would his party let him? Or would there be blood? Would Massachusetts and Virginia array militias against each other somehow? The answer was peace. No one drew their swords. And that's why we're here today. Thomas Jefferson was sworn in as president on March 4th, 1801. And on that inauguration day, President John Adams, actually now former President John Adams, cleaned his stuff out of the White House. He laid down power voluntarily. And then he journeyed home to Massachusetts to return to life as a private citizen like the rest of us, an equal in a country of opportunity. Jefferson called this peaceful transition of power the Revolution of 1800. In America, we are blessed with the opportunity for a peaceful change every four years when we debate big issues at the ballot box and not at the barricades. Regardless of power, Republican or Democrat, we all celebrate the fact that all of us followed John Adams and Thomas Jefferson's lead. Win or lose, we celebrate the fact that our government is limited, an administration doesn't last forever, and its powers don't reach into every crevice of life because most of life is not about government or about power, but rather about freedom, about persuasion, and about love. Majority or minority, we both rededicate ourselves to the defense of our Constitution's system of checks and balances, not because we're obsessed with the past, but because we're obsessed with freedom. And limited government and checks and balances are the framework that is the best defense of freedom. So, as you watch this inauguration, and as you pray for our new president, Reflect on the glories of liberty and the blessings of the peaceful transfer of power. One president will be voluntarily laying down power and rejoining the rest of us as a private citizen to fight for and safeguard liberty. Every American should celebrate Inauguration Day. God bless our new president and God bless America.